while I get this thing put on my body. All right, so I do want to, again, thank Denver and VRI Technology. You guys, I used to be here at the Chamber. Part of my job was selling sponsorships, and you don't even understand the effect that our sponsors have on our organization here at the Chamber. So thank you, Denver, everybody. <laughs> Had to give that shameless plug. One more thing, I see a few more of you coming in, but what I want you to do, I'm gonna take a selfie, okay? I want you guys to raise your hands and act like you're super excited. <laughs> ah, woohoo, yeah! <laughs> I gotta take it this way because there's so many of you back there, Love. Okay, thank you for being here. Um, and we are gonna get started today. You're gonna learn why the F word makes all the difference. And in some cases, we have to censor this, but here at the chamber, they're, they're going to get the F word makes all the difference. <laughs> so let's get acquainted. I know a lot of you in the room, but there's some faces that I've never seen and never met. So I'm Sarah Cortez. Like they said, I used to work here at the chamber in sales. I was in membership, sales, sponsorships, advertising, everything the chamber does for revenue coming in, I was a part of, and that was super exciting. I did that for seven years here at the Chamber. Before that, I spent 11 years in media sales, and now I have a new job, and I'm in the title and escrow industry with Keaton over there. Hey, Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still in sales. So you can take the Chamber girl out of the Chamber, but you can't take the sales girl out of sales, okay? <laughs> uh, but I am so thankful to the Chamber for allowing me to come back here and talk to you guys, because this is something I'm really passionate about. I developed this because when I came to the chamber, I thought that I knew everything, okay, about sales because I had a formula that was given to me by my managers in media. And they said, here, if you work this formula, you're always going to make your budget. And I'm like, sweet. And it happened, okay? I had 11 years of making budget, it was awesome. Then I went over to the chamber and everything changed. It was a different formula and I had to figure it out on my own. There wasn't a formula that somebody said, here is your formula, now go work this. And so I had kind of an idea, but it took me about a year to figure it out. And so what I wanted to do was make something for you so that it wouldn't take you as long as it did me to figure out your new formula. We're all going to change jobs. The numbers are the same, but it's, it's you know the different activities that we're going to talk about. So I want to get to know you. How many of you are commissioned salespeople? Okay, raise your hand if you work for commission. Okay, how many of you are sales managers? Okay, and it depends on you to motivate your team to make their budgets, okay? So you care about their numbers as well as yours. How many of you are sales support? Some of the most important people in our lives. Okay, yeah, Juliet's raising her hand on each and every one of them because the next one, She's a business owner. How many of you guys are business owners? Okay, there's a lot of you, good. Guess what, you're in sales, okay? <laughs> so the only, you know, there's a couple of you that aren't in sales today because you're my friends and you're here. Katie, thank you for being here. But um, you're here because you're in sales and we're all trying to figure this out, okay? So this is really fun. I think this is fun because it, we can all relate to it, okay? What our friends think we do. My brother always says, are you going to another networking event and calling it work? Yep. Woo! <laughs> Can I go to one tonight? <laughs> what our parents think we do. Thank God somebody thinks we're professionals, that we are. <laughs> what society thinks we do. We all know that, but that's not what we do. What our customers think we do, counting those dollar bill bills, yo, you know? That's not what we do. What we think we do, you know, ah, herding cats. What we really do is we're trying to make our numbers. And guess what? We're trying to do that with a customer focus so that they see the results that we know we can get them, okay? So that's what we do. And guess what? I'm here to tell you that this is what we really do. We're mathematicians. And guess what? Salespeople are not good at math. Generally, generally speaking, <laughs> I don't like math necessarily. So we're going back to Sales 101. All right, but if we go back to Sales 101 on a daily basis, Sales 101 on a daily basis is what's going to get us to our numbers. 
It's not always fun, but I'm gonna try to make it a little fun, okay? So bear with me. Um, I, I developed this website and it's awesome because it's Sales 101 and you can go and use this and plug your numbers in. And it does the math for you. I love it. <laughs> but how many of you are making exactly what you wanna make, you don't wanna make anymore? Okay, so there's the rest of you here. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Uh, let's have fun. Okay, so some of you here would like to make a little more money, and I'm going to show you how you can do that. So in my website, and I'm going to try to get there um, from here. It worked yesterday, so bear with me. In my website, you can calculate your numbers. What would you like to make? Is the Wi-Fi on? Maybe not. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're just going to do an example here, um, a working example. And we're going to say, just for pretend, you want to make, now this is all working. Okay, here we go. $100,000. Let's just say that that's what we're going to do. Let's say that your average commission rate is 20%. That means this year you have to sell $500,000 of your product or service to get to that income. Let's say that your average sale is $5,000. So that means this month, it's telling you exactly what you have to do. You have to close 8.3, let's just call it nine clients this month, and you know, around two per week. So that's kind of fun. Do you guys like that? Okay. Um, this is free for you to play around with. And um, you can change the dollar amount, you can change your commission amount, you can change what your average sale is, because we're gonna talk about that later. Hopefully you're driving that up a little bit. But first, I'm gonna drop a meth bomb. Who's ready for it? <laughs> okay, that wasn't good. Who's ready for it? Yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm a softball player. I can go all the way back there if you're ready for it, okay? <laughs> All right, the F word. This is the F word that makes all the difference, okay? All of the difference. The F word is formula. Oh, gosh, who knew? You guys, this is, is really the word that makes all the difference. Once you know your sales formula, you will make your budget, if you do the rest of the things we're gonna talk about. Your sales formula is made up of another F word. Four numbers, who's ready for it? <laughs> I, <laughs> I, get, I tried to play first base. <laughs> they, they wouldn't let me. I'm a better catcher. Okay, so it's made up of four numbers. Okay, the first number is the number of active sales opportunities you're working each month. How many people are you making contact with each month? We're going to keep track of that. We are gonna calculate our average deal value. Take everything that you've sold, divide it by the amount of clients you've sold to, and that's your average deal value for the year. Uh, your closing ratio. Most salespeople are between 20 and 30%. It doesn't get it much better than that. So you're operating on a one, or a two in 10 to a three in 10 closing ratio, usually. Length of sales cycle. This is how many days it takes from your first contact till the close. If you know those four numbers, you can increase your sales. And how many of you know your closing ratio right now? Okay, there's, there's a couple, good. Awesome, you guys are here for a reason. I'm gonna help you figure that out. Um, how many of you know your average deal value-ish? Okay, there's, that, that's good. And we can all count how many people we're calling. Um, I have a spreadsheet that I'll talk to you guys about a little bit later that I'll give you for free that kind of helps me keep all of those intact. And then the length of sales cycle, just remember, <clears throat> write down the first day that you call them, that you get them on the phone, you engage with them, and then the last day. Um, we're going to do some more fun. So this is at the bottom of that website, fword.businessandbellylaughs.com. fword.businessandbellylaughs.com. And this is the tried and true sales velocity calculator. It never changes. It's been the same for years and years and years and years and years. But it's a really difficult formula, so I plugged it into my little website so you guys don't have to do math. It's awesome. So let's play with it a little bit. Oops. 
No, nope, not that yet. Letting the cat out of the bag. Okay, so down here at the bottom is our sales velocity <laughs> calculator. So let's pretend. So in order to get to $500,000 a year, you have to sell roughly $42,000 a month. So this is what we plug our numbers into to see if we're gonna make that number. So let's say that we've contacted and been in touch with 75 people, roughly 15 to 20 people uh, a week this month, okay? And let's say our average deal value is the same, $5,000, and our closing ratio is 20. Let's be a little conservative so that we know we're gonna make our goals. And then let's say our sales cycle, average sales cycle is 60 days. We plug that in and it comes up with $38,021. So is that gonna get us to our goal of 42? <laughs> nope. Okay, the easiest thing to do, let me see, whoop, is to play with these two numbers. Number of active sales opportunities and deal value. So ask more people, for the same amount of money, ask the same amount of people for more money, or ask more people for more money. It's kind of fun. So let's just see with tweaking one thing, ching, ching, to 85 people, that makes our goal, okay? Let's go back to 75. Let's say that our average deal value increases to 6,000. Hey, that makes even more of our goal. Do you guys get the idea? Okay, cool. I hope that you play around with this because it's super fun. And we're back. All right. Okay, you, F you. <laughs> Urgency. <laughs> I, believe me, there's more to this, okay? Um, it's, I don't know if you can guess the next letter. Um, okay. Urgency. Urgency. Let's see who's awake. Bradley's awake. Oh, oh, okay. Bradley, come see me later. I have one. Um, urgency, okay? So once you have your formula, you have to have that urgency. And then we as salespeople, you can tell I have a ton of urgency right now, right? I have way more urgency than my clients do for, for them to use me, okay? And so we have to try to find ways in order for them to match our urgency level, okay? It has to make sense for them in their business. And so... My brother and I, I'm gonna talk a lot about my brother because he and I are both in sales. We've both been in sales for around the same amount of time and we're both funny. <laughs> okay, we're both funny, right? <laughs> I know I can always count on Karina for a laugh. <laughs> okay, and so we bounce things back and forth with each other and we use humor in order to help kind of soften that sale. So we don't come out like the used car sales guy, you know? So we use a little bit of humor. And so I'm gonna tell you a story about urgency. And don't worry, I know you're thinking, what, poop and papers, is that <laughs> urgency? <laughs> We're not talking about that today. But I am gonna tell you a story about my brother and how he was able to successfully create urgency with a spine surgeon, okay? He was in spine sales for eight years. And he had successfully gotten a lot of the spine surgeons in San Diego to use his you know, devices in their surgeries. And he was like, sweet, I'm going for number one. I am going for the number one spine surgeon in all of San Diego because I know I already have his friends and he's gonna do business with me. Well, the guy was extremely hard to get a hold of. Once my brother finally got a hold of him, he had wanted nothing to do with my brother. He was like, um, yeah, I'm not going to listen to you unless you can find papers from my peers that say that they like using your equipment in their surgeries. So Mike was like, okay, that is not super easy to do. But he found seven papers. So seven papers of his peers, and he sent them over to this guy, and he's like, this guy told me exactly what he needed in order for him to buy from me. I gave it to him. The name of the game in sales is you give them what they ask for, and it happens, right? <laughs> well, he gave them the papers, and three weeks later, Michael was still trying to get in touch with this guy. Finally, three weeks later, he did get him on the phone, but the guy hadn't read the papers, and my brother's like, hey, you know, how about those papers? What do you think? And the guy's like, you know, Michael, I'm sorry. I, I haven't had time. And you know what? The guy's right. 
He's in surgery for 12 hours a day. It's tough to get through to these people. But my brother decided to go out on a limb, and I am not, this is disclaimer, okay? You don't do this at home, okay? <laughs> you don't have to try this, but this is what my brother did. My brother said, look, dude, do you take a dump every day? <laughs> the guy's like, what? Where are you going with this? He's a super professional spine surgeon. Uh, my brother, yeah, you take a dump every day. He was like, yeah, Michael, what? He's like, okay, there's seven papers, seven dumps. I'm going to call you in seven days. <laughs> and click, he hung up the phone. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying you need to do this in order to get your sales or create the urgency, but this is what my brother did. And um, sure enough, three days later, the guy called my brother back. Michael, this is, you know, Spine Dog from San Diego. Um, it only took me two days. Two dumps. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. That's all it took. Two dumps. I'm telling you. So finally, we used, he, he used humor. The guy, he brought him to the urgency level. And that's what we have to do on a daily basis. They don't care that we need to make our goals. Okay, we need to talk to more people so that we can get more urgency from them. But they don't care. We meet them on their level. Maybe we throw in a joke or two if that's our personality. Um, I know it's mine and my brother's. Okay, see, we're safe. D. <laughs> discipline, yay! <laughs> I thought you said we were going to have fun today, Sarah. <laughs> ah, discipline. That's like a four letter word, although it's not for salespeople, okay? So, discipline is all that it takes in order to put these things to use. But it's the hardest thing. How many of you struggle with discipline? Me. How many of you are procrastinators? Me. Okay. But I've got some things that will help you, I promise, um, on that discipline angle. Okay. It's called the triple effect. Okay. I, I developed this and it's super cool. And I'm telling you that all you have to do is wake up 15 minutes earlier. I know. I know. I'm used to hitting snooze. 15 is an F word. Okay. Karina. <laughs> okay. 15 minutes earlier and do 15 things. Yeah, that doesn't sound easy, Sarah, in 15 minutes, but it is. All you have to do is think of five things you're thankful for. Every day, wake up. What am I thankful for? Jot them down, five things, that's all. The next thing, five things you have to do today. Five things that by the time you go to bed have to be done. And I guarantee you, if you write them down, they're going to get done because you've got that last check mark. You guys are all type A salespeople. You've got that check mark. You want to check it off. I'm that way too. Five things you have to do today. And five things you love about yourself. I love myself. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm joking. Okay, so I do love myself. But sometimes it's hard. But sometimes it's hard to come up with five things. But if you do that on a daily basis, guess what? You feel better going in to ask for more money. You feel better talking to more people. And you feel better all around. So the triple effect is a thing. It's a hashtag if you want to do it. Triple F star et. Triple effect. All right. Um, my favorite author um, of a sales book is Jeff Blunt. And he says, discipline is giving up what you want now for what you want most. OK? And he says, make one more call before you go home every single day. And I started doing that. We did that here at the chamber. And we started tallying up the dollars that that brought in. It was huge, you guys. Just even my Karina knows me. I'm on the I'm on the road, you know, bailing out to go to kids' games and stuff. But I'm on the phone making my last call in the car, and I hashtag it, you know, hashtag one more call, and I'm, I'm keeping track of those numbers, and it's huge. If you just make one more call every single day before you go home, track the numbers. Let me know how much that grocery sales. The book is Fanatical Prospecting. Take a picture of this. I have it here. You guys can feel it, touch it. Uh, Jeb Blunt is a genius. And in my 17, 18 years of sales, this is the best book I've read to talk about filling your funnel, getting your pipeline going, and actually you know, making what you want to do. OK. He has four things that I'm going to take away from here. Four is an F word. 
Okay, so over here, Valerie. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, elite salespeople are like athletes. They track everything. And then we said that we weren't really good at math, but, but I'm trying to make it easier for you. So we track everything. We track everything. I'm going to help you make that easier too. There's three Ps that hold us all back. I already talked about procrastination. Procrastination, perfectionism, and paralysis for analysis. What should I say in this email? Oh, I shouldn't say that. Okay, so that's killing us. And a lot of times it's one sentence in an email that's gonna make a difference, okay? Stop overthinking it. The law of replacement, this one was the one that just changed everything and blew my mind. So. When you sell, let's say your closing ratio is 20%, that means for every 10 people you ask for business, you get two people that do business mm -hmm. with you. The law of replacement says that once you close those two people, we think we have to replace them with two people, right? We just close two, we replace them with two, my list is going, no, it's the law of replacement. You just closed two out of 10. You have to replace it with 10 people. That's what makes the difference. The law of replacement. Replace those two with 10. And then protect your golden hours. Call blocking is so important. And we'll talk a little bit about that in the next, in the next story. It's call blocking. And I say call blocking, but wait, isn't cold calling dead? Okay. No. Who thinks cold calling is dead? But I'm a relationship seller. We are all relationship sellers. But I, regardless if it's an outgoing email, an outgoing text, a networking event, um, we have to interrupt people's day in order to fill our funnel, okay? And we're gonna talk about what that looks like. So it's another F word, yay! Ah. Farming, oh hey, green shirt guy, I don't know you, here you go. <laughs> Oops, other one, it's okay, I'll get you one too. Scott, here's yours. <laughs> Jeb also says the pipe is life. Not that kind of pipe, you know what I'm talking about. The pipeline, <laughs> your sales pipeline is life. And so this is kind of an interesting story and Karina is gonna shake her head. She knows what I'm talking about. So when we're talking about filling our pipeline, we are talking about the daily disciplines that it takes in order to make our goals. And so in 2017, I was turning 40 years old. I had some big goals that year, and one of them was to make this Lifetime Achievement Award for the Chamber. And in order to do that, I pretty much had to double perform between January and the end of May. And I was like, okay, if I can do this, I've pretty much got my year sealed up, and I'm just going to totally slack in June and July. Okay, Karina? And she's like, uh, okay, don't tell anybody else that. <laughs> Um, so anyway, oh, there it is. Um, I told her that. I told my boss that. Um, and she said, okay, whatever. Uh, and so what I did was I slacked for June and July. And my sales sucked. But I had so much fun. And I turned 40. <laughs> and then I was ready to come back to work. And it was the end of August. And I was like, yes, I have all this energy. And guess what? It took me so long to get that momentum back. And guess what that did to my mindset? I hated it. I hated myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't find the five things that I loved about myself during that period because I like to win. I like to, you know, I like to have those constant closes. And that didn't happen for about two and a half months. I let my pipeline go for two months, and it took me two and a half months to get back up and running. I will never do that again. Ever, ever, ever. So the next July, I double performed. I, I outperformed the last July and the July before because I was not going to let that happen again. So I can talk from experience that the pipe is life. And if you're anything like me, you are your hardest critic. Who is your hardest critic? If it's you, raise your hand. Okay, me too. I kicked my own butt that whole entire time. Never again. Okay. Oh! <laughs> what is this? What a... All this bathroom talk. Okay. This is another story that involves cold calling. Woo! I actually love cold calling.
cold calling. <laughs> who does? Who loves cold calling? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, for those of you who don't, um, I'm not, again, this is a disclaimer, hashtag don't do this at home. Um, I'm not saying that you need to do this, but I did it, and it worked out. So, I was trying to call, we'll call him Company X. I'm calling Company X, and I was working here at the chamber, and it's a wonderful company in Boise that manages major wealth, and most of their business is out of town, out of state, out, some even out of the country. And yet, yeah, there's a lot of major wealth here. We have some Fortune 500 companies and you know the largest grocer, whatever. Um, there's opportunities to do business here for this company, and I knew that the chamber could help them because we were working on tax legislation. We were working on things that would help their business, and I knew they would see the value of the chamber. So I wouldn't let it go, you guys. I was calling him all the time. He was never answering his phone. Finally, I realized. You did. My brother works in the same building that he does. And this was back in the day when he did. And I was like, Michael, okay, here we go. If you see this guy in the bathroom, you tell him to call Sarah back from the chamber. <laughs> and so <laughs> one day, and this is one day, you know, salespeople, we're never at our desk, right? We're always up banging in the streets. I was at my desk this day, and I got a phone call. Sarah, this is so-and-so from Company X. Uh -oh. No way! Did you see my brother in the bathroom? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> now, I'm away from the chamber. There's still a chamber member. They've sent people through Leadership Boise. They see the value of their membership, just like you guys do. You know, this is valuable, right? <laughs> no, all joking aside, um, Leadership Boise is an awesome program. That's just a little side note. If you haven't gone through it, <laughs> I Carly was in my class back there and Mary Michael. Um, if you haven't gone through Leadership Boise, think about it, talk to Erin. Um, it's an amazing program. And they thought so too. All I had to do was have my brother find him in the bathroom so he'd call me back. But that was my favorite cold call story. Okay. <laughs> okay, now's the fun stuff. So if we have the formula, the urgency, and the discipline, we will get the growth we want. Yep. We will get the excellence that we want. And that is where the fudge comes in. Woo! Fudge. <laughs> Who wants fudge? Uh oh, we've got people that want fudge. We want fudge. Okay. I've got more fudge, and we're going to do that later, too. Okay? Okay. Remember, we talked about sales slumps. I want you to remember this. This is one thing to take away. 99% of sales slumps can be directly connected to your failure to prospect. We talked about that. And then, this is also fun. So if we've got our formula going, we've got the urgency, we've got the discipline, sometimes all we have to do is show up. I know in the chamber, we loved it when we got a joined online. We were like, yes! Somebody joined without me even having to call them. Shut up. Uh, this happened to, again, we're going to talk about family members of mine. My husband is a realtor. And how many of you remember Snowmageddon? Were you here for Snowmageddon? We had to dig ourselves out of our house, basically. Um, so anyway, we were in the height of Snowmageddon. And it was the day that everybody went and bought all the water in town. I was literally at Fred Meyer, and there was no water. And my husband was working an open house. <laughs> Those of you who know Oscar, he's, he does what he says he's going to do. He said he was going to do an open house. And I called him and I'm like, honey, what are you doing? I am at Fred Meyer. There is no water. What are you doing? He's like, I'm holding an open house. And I'm not going to leave. And I was like, okay, okay. But, you know, the world's ending. We don't need water. <laughs> and, okay, whatever. Click. And um, sure enough, a lady walks into his open house. And he was up on the bench, and he said, she says, I need to sell my house on the bench and buy a house on the bench. I like this one. And he's like, Shh, really? Okay. He showed up that day, and guess what? He finally sold her house on the bench. She finally bought a house on the bench. It was, you know, when the snow had already melted, but he met her that day, and all he had to do was show up. That same year, Snowmageddon, um, my husband and I mentioned he's a realtor. Beep, beep, he drives a little Prius, or he did drive a Prius. And we live on a hill. And the day before Christmas Eve, so 23rd of December, he was trying to get up to our house, and his little Prius was not the engine that could. It slid back down, and he had 
had to walk up the hill to our house. And he's like, okay, tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I'm going to go to the closest car dealership, and if they have a Subaru and it makes up the hill, I'm buying it. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I'm out there shoveling snow, literally. And he's like, beep, beep, woo, you know, and the Subaru zooms up the road. And I was like, okay, we have a Subaru. <laughs> he went back, wrote up the deal. It was an hour from start to finish of him buying that Subaru. But guess what? When he got to Fairly Reliable Bob's, another good chamber member, when he got there, the guy was literally asleep on his desk because he didn't think anybody was going to show up on Christmas Eve. And he was sleeping. No worries. My husband woke him up. Hey, do you have a Subaru? Yeah. If it makes it up the hill, I'm buying it today. Okay. They get in the Subaru. They come up. They go back. He buys the Subaru. Got rid of the Prius. And it was the best thing he'd ever done. But that day, the guy at the dealership just had to show up. <laughs> You know, it's awesome sometimes how that happens. The universe gives us kisses for the good work we do while we are fudging through. <laughs> fudging. Okay, the triple effect. How many of you guys liked that? Did you guys like the triple effect? I have a little sheet over here, and I'm going to pass it out. And this is something that you can make copies of. Just go ahead and take one, pass it down. Take one, pass it down. Um, you can make copies of this. I plan on doing something with this in the form of a journal someday. But if we just do this, if you guys leave here and just do this, I guarantee you good things are going to happen in your life. Good things are going to happen in your business. Good things are going to happen in your mindset and how much you love each other. You love yourself. Yeah. Can you uh, say that quote so again with the universe? You said the universe. Sometimes the universe gives us a kiss. Yeah. Did we get enough over here? Okay. Here we go. We can maybe take some and pass them back this way. Okay, here we go. And if you don't have any, just ask somebody to pass it back to you. Okay? And there's more where that came from. I'm going to put it on my website so you guys can download it, make it pretty, and print as many as you want. Um, or you can just do it in your phone like I do sometimes. Okay, triple effect. Another thing that I realized is that sometimes we leave these little presentations and then we're like, what did she say I had to do? What were those four numbers? I didn't write them down. So what I did is I made the F files, okay? And this is, this will take you from determining your top three goals all the way through, let's see, boom, tracking your activity. How to track your activity. The four things that you must calculate in order to make your sales goals. It will take you through how to calculate them. It gives you the math equation, just in case you don't know how to do math like me. And um, so it's kind of fun. And um, the F file. So let's, let's kind of go through this a little bit. I've got a little bit of time. Do you need two more? Okay. All righty. And then we can pass them around. I, I still have some up here, so that means that there's probably some that don't. Oops. Okay. Actually, I love that quote. Okay. Take a picture of that. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. That's the first thing we have to do here is, is just determine three goals. Just determine three goals that you want to accomplish. Let's say this quarter. Let's say this year, whatever. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. I have your plan right here. Okay? It's all written down for you. You track your activity. That's the first thing you do. Um, throughout the month, <clears throat> you figure out how much you want to make this year. You figure out your average commission rate. You figure out your average sale. And you figure out activity goals. How much activity do you have to do to get there? That's what you do. And then at the end of the month, I've got it all here for you on how to calculate your activity. Um, you'll help calculate number of sales activities, average deal, closing ratio, length of sale. That's what you do at the end of the month. On these pages, it actually gives you the formula. It gives you my website so that you can plug in your numbers and figure it out. It's going to change every month. I was talking about July. July was a really slow month in chamber sales. Okay, And we just knew that. We planned for it. 
So our closing ratio was a little bit different in July than it was in April when everybody wants to be in the directory and they're joining left and right and it's a heyday and we're having parties. Um, and then we go have our own parties and go on vacation in July because we know that everybody else is on vacation. And our closing ratio is gonna be a little bit different, but we plan for it, okay? So this, the F files will help you. And then coming soon, there's gonna be a podcast that kind of, uh, it's called the F files, it's part of my business and belly laughs podcast and vlogs. And it's going to kind of do the nitty gritty of what we're doing out there fudging through. Uh, it'll be stories from the field that are not funny. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, we are salespeople. Most of the time we're getting told no. How do we deal with that? Well, we'll talk about it on the F files. There's nothing funny about it. But the business and belly laughs, that's the funny part. And so we tell funny stories about humor, like the one about the cold calling. Um, and then, <laughs> Just last night, I made this up, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, we need, we need an accountability group. Who needs accountability? Okay, uh, some of you do, some of you don't. You're, you guys are awesome, I do. So, um, we're going to have a, a monthly Fudgers accountability Facebook group. So, um, it's free. If you want to join me, I'm going to be stumbling around in there trying to figure out how to make this group something of value to everybody. So if you want to be an MFR, uh, come and see me, because it's going to be fun, okay? I promise, we're going to be MFRs together, monthly fudgers. You probably met somebody close to you, but if you didn't, I want you to turn to each person next to you and say, we are fudging through. We are fudging through, you guys. We now have, we are fudging through together. And everybody in this room, everybody in this room is doing the same thing. We are fudging through together. So I've got some fudge for those that were brave enough to say a little something. I've got pieces of fudge. I love it. Fudge and fun, and they're all backwards. Or you can just love it. today. I hope that you learned that the F word makes all the difference. And I hope that you learned that while we're fudging through, we have people around us that are fudging through with us. Let's fudge through together. Okay? Um, as we leave today, I will have my cards. I'm fudging through with you. This is my job. I, you know, I have three of them. I have three jobs. So, um, you know, my job is to sell my own um, day job. This is my side job. And I have another sales side job so that I can learn to fly. And uh, it's expensive to fly. And so I sell some skincare on the side to make sure that I can, uh, you know, get up in the air. Um, but that's what I'm doing. I'm fudging through with you guys. And I know that you're all doing this on your own. If you are, you need a mentor. If you need a mentor, I can direct you to an awesome mentor. Um, and seriously, you guys, have fun with this. Remember that dropping F-bombs, fudging through, is actually, this is fun. And if you need help, ask. We're gonna end early. I know you guys love to network together, so you're gonna get a little bonus networking time. If you wanna come chat with me, that's awesome. Chat with each other, please. Give out more of your business cards. This is the thing with the chamber. We do business with people that give back to our community. So please, do business with each other. You're all chamber members here, okay? If you're in need of an insurance person, Juliet's here. If you need, you know, technology, IT for your company, Denver's here. You need your, your offices cleaned, Dan and Lauren are here. Um, we all have something to offer. It's like with that cold call. They don't know that the value of what you have to offer unless you can get a hold of them. It doesn't have to be on the phone, but unless you can tell them how you can help their needs, they won't know. And that's what we're all here to do, is help.